Okay, exploding weed seeds in slow motion. Oh, man! Arabidopsis, I think. I'm Dwight Whitaker. I'm a physicist who studies plant motion. In particular, I like to look at how plants explode to disperse their seeds and spores so that they can move, in a sense, or populate different areas of space. It looks like the first video I'm going to watch here is from BBC Earth, and this is a video that's entitled Caterpillar Feeding on Exploding Seed Pods. I came across these when I was a little kid. They used to um, grow in where I grew up in Connecticut, and uh, we used to play with them at the bus stop. Let's see what the caterpillars learn. Actually, pretty surprising. They're, they're incredibly sensitive plants. Um, usually if you touch them anywhere, they explode, but evolution being what it is, the caterpillar has sort of figured out a way to maybe get a little snack before it explodes. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, it happens way too fast to see with a camera like this. In my group, we use uh, ultra high speed video cameras to look at this. Yeah, actually you can see how they coil up. So the energy in these things is just stored. They don't want to be straight, they want to be coiled. And if you start to unwind them and it really feels like there's a piece of wire in there, there's not. It's all just water pressure that, that, holds, that makes them curl up like that. But they want to be curled, but they grow in such a way that they can't be. And as soon as one thing sort of breaks a single seam on there, they all just curl up all at once and you can see the seeds get shot out. The seeds can go something like 20, 30 feet. It's pretty impressive. Escaping predation is definitely one um, hypothesis for why these things work that way, and watching the caterpillars uh, have to fight that is kind of cool. Himalayan balsam and squirting cucumber in slow motion. So the Himalayan balsam, that's gonna be another uh, touch-me-not, so that, that's an impatience as well. So this is a nice contrast to the last one. The last one, was sort of filmed with a regular camera. Here with the ultra high speed camera, you can really see the dynamics. And what, what's always interesting to me is no matter how you touch these things, they always explode exactly the same way where they all start curling up at once. And I, I think that must be something evolutionary. There's a lot of similarities here. Again, escaping predation, right? So an animal comes along, is trying to eat your seeds. You don't want it to eat your seeds. Well, one way to do that is to just shoot your seeds away from the animal as soon as it gets there. So, you know, some, some sort of hair trigger that's gonna eject your seeds. Um, both of these plants, which aren't at all closely related, are, are sharing that. In this case, the water pressure is actually inside the cucumber itself, right? So it's this like champagne bottle that you maybe shook up. And as soon as you blow the cork, the, the, the water, the champagne, and, the champagne or the water in this case is gonna go out and it's gonna be happy to drag those seeds along with it that are inside. I kind of like this combination of plants because a lot of this, there's a lot of similarities here. Again, you can see evolution has sort of like, once it's onto something, most of the impatience plants um, have exploding fruits, right? So. Once this trait is, has evolved, it gets passed down to its progeny because and re-evolved or sort of re recaptured in later um, species. Some of those seeds are going very far, right? The ones that miss the leaves are going to go plenty far away and they'll be able to explore some new space and maybe the plant can spread that way. But a bunch of the seeds also stay locally and I think that actually might be a strategy that plants have where you sort of place a couple long bets of just try to go far away but also let's hedge some of our bets and plant some of our seeds right here where it worked last time as well. The next video is biodiversity shorts um, and this video is unknown exploding seed pods. Well let's see if we can know what some of these are. I forget what name of plant this is but I have seen this. This is another strategy okay so this is actually a nice contrast to the last videos. In the last videos, the plant invested its energy in water pressure, right? And water pressure was the, the provided the energy that, that powered the explosions. In this case, you can see that these are not, these are brown, right? These, these look like dehydrated plants. And indeed, um, another way that energy can get stored is after the, the fruit grows, as it starts to dry out, if it shrinks differently, you can start to create some strains inside of it. And that's exactly what's happening here. So as these fruits dry out, they shrink in a way that they want to split open. But again, there's like some sort of glue that's holding the two valves together until it doesn't. And then when that glue comes unhinged, all the energy is released at once in a sudden explosion. So from TD Tangents, the video is Jewelweed. Jewelweed is a common name for Impatiens capensis or Impatiens pallida. These tend to grow in wet areas or near riverbanks and stuff like that all over the East Coast. Uh, and late summer is when they start to fruit and they have these pretty orange flowers. Again, they want to be curled up and I, I it's just the coolest thing to play with these because they feel incredibly stiff, really like there's a paper clip inside or a spring inside. But then you squish them and get the water out and they're just floppy like a dead leaf. So I would say if you are fortunate enough to um, get to play with one of these plants, try to be a little less handsy this, than this person. Try to not squeeze them, try to just tap them and stuff like that and you'll get a much cleaner and nicer explosion.
Okay, exploding weed seeds in slow motion, Arabidopsis, I think. The same sort of thing. We have this fruit where all the valves are straight. The, the internal forces on those valves don't want to be straight. They want to be curled up. And once you break the bond between the valves and you let them curl up, they do. And then the seeds go along for the ride. Trivial fact, these are act, the, uh, the impatiens are curling inwards. These ones are curling outwards. And again, you can see that the seeds are sort of stuck to the valve. So as the valve starts to really rapidly uncurl or like a slap bracelet, um, the seeds get shot out because they're again, they, they're just loosely attached. And once the acceleration gets too high, they become detached. And you can see this one's not shooting in any particular direction. It's just kind of shooting everywhere. The seeds are stuck to the pods and there's only, if they want to go in circles, they need some centrifugal force to hold them on. And the glue is that centrifugal force. But as you get them spinning faster and as they move towards the, the center, the centrifugal force gets greater and eventually overcomes the, the adhesive force of the little glue that's holding them on. And look what a smart plant too, right? You don't need much to get you going, right? Just a footstep that's sort of at the stalk that sort of makes it move. And not only do the seeds get shot out, but look which way they get shot. They get shot out up, nice little projectiles are gonna sort of get out of the little, the, the business down that's happening there with all the plants and um, be able to sort of launch themselves pretty far away. And this is why this plant would be pretty darn invasive, right? It's gonna just take a couple generations to send its seeds hundreds of feet. If you sort of think about it, if you can go twice as far um, with your fruit, you can sort of populate areas at twice the rate of something else. So that, that I think is what's in it for all these plants. Next video is from BD Exclusive News. Uh, Ruelia tuberosa or the cracker plant. The cool thing about the Ruelias, they all share a common um, explosive mechanism to shoot their seeds as well. And this is a little bit different and maybe more sophisticated than, uh, if I can use that term in evolution, than the other ones that we've seen. So this is one of the hygrocastic ones, as they're called. If you look down there, you can see on the ins after these ones have exploded, as there's sort of a couple that are facing you, you can see these tiny little hooks along the spine. Each of those hooks has a tiny little cradle and cradles each individual seed. So as this fruit splits open like that, these hooks will fling the seeds. Actually, what my group discovered is they actually get flung with backspin, which is the only stable way to throw a disc. These fruits, these dried fruits, will just sit and wait patiently until some rain comes and then they'll snap open. From Simon Snow, it is the yellow wood sorrel. This one is probably the weirdest plant seed ejection that I think I've ever seen. It doesn't happen right away. This is actually a multi-stage process, okay? So you squeeze it, and what that does again is the valves kind of split, and these seeds are, are pushing, trying to get out of the valves the whole time. So you squeeze it, you open them up, and they come out, but that's not the whole thing. So as they come out, the seed itself is enveloped by this sort of waxy sort of membrane that's around it that's not attached to the seed. And the waxy membrane, I think, lets it slip easily out between the valves, and then once it's free of the valves, that waxy membrane doesn't want to be curled up around the seed. It actually wants, it's inside out. It wants to be the other way. So it sort of squirts out and then it makes itself right side out. And in the process of making itself right side out, it shoots the seed really far. So it's like a, a multi-stage rocket in a sense. You've got the first stage which squirts it out through the valves. And then the second stage where the, um, the little waxy part everts and ejects the seed out further. And it, it can go really fast, right? Because all that work to get out of the valve has already happened, and then it's that second stage that gives it the really high velocity to go far. Probably one of the most fantastic mechanisms I've seen. So that was really fun. I hope this helped you understand that plants aren't just sort of static things that sit there and sometimes look pretty. They can be incredibly dynamic, and, and in my impression, their evolution has become a markedly good engineer, and I think not only in sort of mechanisms to shoot seeds, but with my research, we're also learning that aerodynamically, once the seeds are in the air, uh, nature has come up with some wonderful tricks to fly through the air more effectively. I think this is sort of an early stage in sort of plant dy dynamics research of seed dispersal, but I imagine we're going to learn some wonderful tricks that uh, we haven't figured out ourselves and be able to copy it to make better projectiles for our own purposes.